I'm installing track feeders on my model railroad layout on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. All of us have the areas of model railroading that are our favorites, and we also have those things that we would really rather not do. One of the things that can be intimidating for a lot of people is the electrical portions of setting up their own model railroad layouts. Well, today I'm going to hopefully help simplify that process for you, as I'm going to be installing some track feeders on my layout in a way that will work perfectly whether you're running DC or DCC. I'll show you exactly how I install the feeders and how I tie them into the bus wire or the main power for the layout. So let's head on over to the other side of the layout and we'll get started. Take a moment to check out our sponsor, Midwest Model Railroad. They have a great line of model railroad equipment and supplies and some of the best customer service around. Their website has a real-time inventory system, they offer some of the best prices in model railroading, and they ship in one business day. Check them out at MidwestModelRR.com, link in the description. Here's the area where I'm going to be working today, just off the back end and on the north end of North Yard. Now, North Yard in this area has all been wired and is working electrically perfectly. But you see, I have this one uh, spur here that goes to a couple of industries uh, on the back side of North Yard. And this spur and the, the two spurs that go to the industries at this point do not have uh, track feeders and so there is no uh, electricity running to them. Now, one thing that is very important uh, that I like to do uh, and need to do is I like to wire on every side of any turnout that I have. Uh, the turnouts that I'm using are Pico and they are power routing turnouts, which means that depending on electricity to flow through them, uh, depending on which way they are turned, is not particularly reliable. Uh, so in this case, where I've got a turnout, uh, I want a set of drop feeders uh, on this side of the, uh, this leg, and then on both tracks uh, on the, the diverging route. So what I'm gonna be doing today is dropping three sets of drop feeders here, here, and here. That's what we're going to be doing. Uh, First, let me move some of these cars out of the yard, out of the way. I'm going to pull the uh, structures off of these uh, industries so that they'll be out of the way. And then we'll be ready to get started doing some wiring. Well, I have all of my cars and structures moved out of the way, and the power is turned off to my layout, so I'm ready to get started with my wiring. Now, I do want to take a moment to say that I am dropping some feeders on a DCC layout, but the process of wiring the feeders that I'm going to show you today would work equally as well uh, whether you're doing a DCC uh, installation or a regular direct current installation work exactly the same. The first step in the process, of course, is going to be getting the feeders through the sub road bed down underneath the layout in the position that I need them. So in order to uh, accommodate that, I've got my handy dandy cordless drill and I've got a drill bit that is just large enough for my feeders to fit through. 
Uh, in this case, I, I use drop feeders of 22 gauge hookup wire. And so a 3 30 seconds drill bit is actually perfect for that. You can actually use one slightly larger as the hole is going to be completely covered with ballast later. Uh, but I find that it's a little easier to hold the wire in place if I have a hole that the wire fits snugly through, but not so tight that I have to force it. Now, the one thing I do want to do is I want to make sure that I install my feeder wires on the outsides of the rail. I don't want any wires or solder on the insides of the rail where it might interfere with the flanges of the wheel sets and thus cause derailments. So I'm going to be drilling on the front side of the rail that is nearest to me, but on the rail to the rear, I'm going to be drilling on the back side. It's going to be a little bit interesting, but I've got a tool that I'll show you that will help us as we work on the back side of the rail. For now, I want to come in and I'm going to take my drill bit and I want to set it in between the railroad ties. Uh, and right up against the rail as close as I can get it. Now as I drill this I want to be very careful because if my drill bit when it goes through the uh, sub road bed uh, if it drops too quickly uh, the the chuck on my drill can hit the rail and actually damage the rail. So I want to be very careful about how I do this but I just want to drill a hole right next to the rail through the sub road bed again very carefully so as not to damage the rail. Air it went through and I'll pull it out and then uh, for the sake of being able to find it I'll draw the other one basically straight across from it behind the rear rail. And I'm going to repeat that process every place that I want a set of feeders. Now that we have our holes drilled, we're ready to start running our feeder wires down through the sub roadbed of our layout. Now I mentioned that running the wires and working behind the back rail uh, on the layout can be a little bit of a challenge, but I have this handy dandy homemade tool that'll help us with exactly that purpose. This is simply a, a little mirror taken out of a makeup compact and I've glued a little block of wood to it on the back with some hot glue. This allows me to set this mirror uh, at various angles, depending on what I need, behind that rear rail, and it gives me a perfect view uh, to work on the, the rear rail of, uh, of uh, any section of the layout. Now, on my layout, I, uh, on the lower deck, uh, I have the red wire to the rear, red to the rear uh, on the lower deck. So I'm simply going to come in here where I've drilled my hole and I'm going to drop my, uh, my feeder wire through the hole. Push it down far enough that I know it'll show up down below. And then I'll do the same thing with my black wire on the front. Now, with those wires dropped through the deck of the layout, I need to go below to make sure that I've got the right amount of wire to get to the place where I need to connect it in. I'm going to take you under the layout with me a little bit later, but first we're going to get all of these pulled through uh, and cut to the right length so I've got my feeder wires ready to solder on the uh, rails on the top of the deck. Once I have my feeder wires pulled uh, the length I need them down below, I'm just going to cut them off uh, with a pair of simple small side cutters. Uh, I'm going to cut them just about two inches or so long up here on top and bend that over just to make sure it doesn't fall down below the layout before I am ready to uh, solder it and work with it next. And then we're ready to run uh, our next set of feeder wires. Now that we have all of our wires dropped through the sub road bed, I've got them pulled to length uh, down below and uh, got them cut off uh, here. Now we're ready to start preparing them for soldering. First thing I have to do, of course, is strip a little bit of the insulation off of the ends of these. And for that, I've got uh, these little wire strippers. If you don't have one of these automatic wire strippers, they are a fantastic little tool. Um, and you see, I just need to take off, oh, maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe just a little more than I 
than I did right there. Um, now, one thing I don't know if I mentioned before, I said I was using 22 gauge wire, uh, but uh, you'll notice I'm using solid wire here. For my bus wires, I always use stranded wire because it's much easier to bend it around corners. But for reasons that you'll see in a moment, I really, really prefer solid wire for this hookup wire. And um, you'll see exactly why in just a few minutes. So I'm going to go ahead on uh, these right here and strip the ends off of all of these four. Uh, with the wire stripped on the ends, uh, I'm going to come in with a pair of... Uh, these are smooth jawed needle nose pliers. And for this, they don't have to be smooth jawed all the way up if they're serrated jaw on the end. As long as they're smooth down here close to the cutter, uh, that should still work. I mean, uh, and I'm gonna take them, I'm just gonna take the end, just about the last eighth of an inch or so, and I'm gonna put it in the needle, in those pliers, and I'm just gonna squeeze it hard and flatten it. Uh, I think you can see there, hopefully, that that is nice and flattened. Okay, just a little flattened end on each one of them. And then I'm going to come in with the pliers again. I'm going to grab just that flattened part, and not quite all of the flattened part. And I'm going to bend it at 90 degrees. So the flattened part is just, just bent 90 degrees to, uh, to the rest of the wire. Do that on all four of them. And then I'm going to come in again with my side cutters that I had before. And that part that I bent, I'm going to catch it so that, so that I'm just going to leave uh, just a little lip of what I just bent and cut the rest off. And you just end up with this little bit of a hook. Uh, and I'm going to do that with all of them. What that's going to do is that little hook is going to be just enough of a flattened hook to catch the bottom of the the uh, of the foot of the rail and that's where i'm going to solder these on and that's going to allow these to solder into place uh, and not leave a lot of uh, extra wire showing uh, and uh, it actually kind of gives the the sense almost of being like a uh, like a rail spike now with all of our wires prepared we're ready to do some soldering and so for that we're going to come in and use uh, a little bit of flux first of all and what I have here is a uh, an acid-free liquid flux that we're going to be using uh, on these joints. Flux helps to both clean the parts of the joint and uh, also prohibits the flow of the solder and so I want to put a little bit of flux on the rail right where I want to solder it and in this case uh, again it's a liquid flux I'm just using a micro brush and I'm going to put it just on the outside of the rail, right where I want to make the joint. And um, let me go ahead and do both of these wires on this joint at the same time. And I'm also going to get a little bit, and I'm going to just put a little bit on the wire uh, up underneath the hook that I just made. Uh, so that there's uh, plenty of flux there. Now, I want to make sure that those hooks... Uh, are turned towards the rail so that means sometimes I'm gonna to have to twist them a little bit and uh, that can take a little work there we go so I got this one turned towards the rail got this one turned towards the rail gonna get them down in there close okay and then I'm going to come in with my soldering iron. And you can see I've got my soldering iron tip well tinned. And uh, if you want to see some information about making sure that you've got a, a good, clean, good working tinned soldering tip, uh, I've got a, a great video about doing that. And you'll see a link to it in the iCard uh, in the corner of your screen right now. You can check that out uh, after you're finished watching this video. Uh, but I'm going to just work this wire down and kind of bending it towards the rail until it's down and just hooks on the bottom edge of the web of the, uh, the base of the rail. And I'm going to apply some heat. Uh, and I want to do this fairly quickly because I don't want to melt ties. And as soon as I see that solder start to melt and flow, I'm going to put just a touch of solder in there. I'm going to leave it for just a moment. 
and take it away. Now, I actually have more solder on that joint than I really would like. Um, and here I am messing with it, which is not a good idea. Um, I probably have enough solder on my tip to, uh, to solder one of these still now. So I'm going to come in here with my rear one. And again, I'm going to kind of bend it towards the rail using my mirror to kind of see what I'm doing and get it right down against the base of the rail. Come in with my soldering iron and really close to the backdrop here, which is making that a little bit of a challenge. Uh, but I want to make sure that I get both the rail and the wire a little hot. I'm going to add just a little solder there. And uh, there, that looks pretty good. And uh, we'll go ahead and do these others real quick while we're here. And uh, those look really, really good. Now, one of the things that is a test of, of a good solder joint is when it's done, it should be nice and shiny. And I hope you can see that in the camera there. It's a nice, shiny joint there. This one's nice and shiny. If they're dull, then what you have is a, a cold joint, or sometimes it's referred to as a dry joint. Uh, it means that the solder did not uh, adhere good to one or both pieces of metal. Uh, and that's a joint that's going to break and, and, and turn loose. If they're nice and shiny, that is one good indication that you have a, 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 good, a good solder joint. Now that our solder joints are uh, made and they've had a few minutes to cool, uh, we're going to kind of finish these off. And first thing I'm going to come in and do is, is uh, I almost always end up with a little bit of solder on the top of the rail. And uh, I, I want to smooth that out. And the way I do that is I simply come in with a, uh, with a file, a small file, and uh, I just very lightly go over just the joint and to make sure that I get that solder off. Now, I know some of you are, are uh, kind of freaking out, saying you're scratching up your rail and you're going to cause it to uh, collect dirt. Well, I'm going to deal with that in just a moment. Uh, but the first issue is just to remove any any solder that is on the top of the rail that would cause a, a bump there that might cause it to, to derail. I also like to run, I run my finger along it. I can feel that it's smooth. I also run my finger along the inside of the joint uh, to make sure that, uh, of course, I didn't have any solder that got on the inside of the rail either that would interfere with the flanges. Uh, once, once I have, have done that, uh, to fix the problem of maybe any scratches that I created there. Uh, I have this little burnishing tool, and this is just a little block of wood. It has a stainless steel washer that I have glued to it with epoxy. And I'm going to come in there and I'm going to burnish that joint with that steel washer. And what that's going to do, as I do that for uh, several seconds, is it will burnish and he help heal any of those micro scratches that I... Uh, may have put in the rail there again i want to do that you know just as flat and smooth as i can uh, and that'll help polish uh, and, and and heal up those uh, those scratches in the rail and then uh, we have that problem fixed now the last thing that i i want to do uh, when i'm done here is uh, of course we, we applied some flux and we didn't apply a lot of flux but you, as you get it hot though you almost always have a little flux that's going to flow out onto the rail and that flux will, will inhibit paint. And I, of course, I'm, I'll, I'll paint this rail ultimately. And so I want to clean any excess flux off. And what I have here is I just have a little uh, jar lid. And I've got just a little bit of denatured alcohol and an old toothbrush. And uh, I'm going to just get my toothbrush damp with that denatured alcohol. And I'm just going to scrub that joint. And actually, I'm going to scrub it on both sides because that flux can flow you know, around and through and all, all over the, the joint itself. Um, and that will remove any of that excess flux that might be left on the rail and will help it to be able to paint a lot better whenever the time comes. Now it's time to go connect them into the system on the bottom of the layout. So let's go underneath the layout and see what's happening down there. Well, here we are on the uh, underneath of the layout, and I am actually, the camera is pointed straight up. So what you're looking at is the bottom of the sub roadbed, and what you see right here 
is uh, the bus wire that I'm going to connect my, uh, my feeders into. And here is the per first pair of, uh, of feeders that I'm going to, to uh, connect in. Now, there are uh, multiple ways of doing this, and I'm actually going to show you two different ways today uh, to connect these feeder wires in uh, in a way that's going to work. What I typically do, and as you can see right, right, uh, right here, and also here in my hand, is I typically connect my feeder wires in using uh, what's called an insulation displacement connector or an IDC, but they're more commonly referred to as suitcase connectors. And, uh, and some people don't like these. I know people who work in electronics and high-end electronics don't like them because there's always that concern that on an airplane, this could fail. Um, and if I was building an airplane, I, I would agree with that. But in this case, you know, I've uh, used them on model railroads for years. I've never had one fail. Uh, and if I ever did have one fail, all I got to do is put in another one. So, so I, I, I like them. I think they work well. They're really easy. And what you do, you have to make sure you get the right size. Now, in this case, I'm using 22 gauge wire here. Uh, this is a sub bus and uh, I, I wire my layout a little differently than some others do. Over here, you'll see a main bus, which is a 12 gauge wire that runs from my uh, power around the layout. And then for each uh, short management district, I run a sub bus, which is 18 gauge wire. If you wanna know how I do all of that, I made a video about that wiring. And in fact, I will uh, place a, a, a card in the corner of your screen right now, if you'd like to go watch that video after this one's finished, uh, when uh, you can go and, and check that out and see exactly how I do that. But anyway, you simply take your, uh, your suitcase connector and it kind of slips on to the side of the bus wire. And then uh, as you look at it, there's one end that you can stick your other wire into. And I just take the end of my um, feeder that I just made and I stick it into the end there. I wanna hold those nice and, and tight together to make sure that it's staying in place. And then I just come in with a pair of pliers. Uh, they, they make a crimping tool that you can use for this, but pliers work fine. Carefully and squarely, crimp on that and what you're doing is this little piece of metal that you saw right there uh, you can see it here on this one uh, right there that piece of metal pushes down it's got a little fork on each side that uh, pushes through the insulation on each side and connects to the wire on the inside and then the reason it's called a suitcase connector is because it has this little lid that closes over the top of that and of course you'll see obviously I just matched red to red close the lid of the suitcase and that one is connected in it's ready to go for those who don't like using suitcase connectors or idcs uh, the other option we have of course is to solder our feeder wires in and i'm going to do that uh, right here uh, and literally what i'm going to do is you know in line here i'm going to come in with my wire strippers get the right gauge wire uh, and uh, i'm just going to strip a piece of that wire right in the middle and uh, you can see, uh, I think, right there, literally that just pushed the insulation both directions. And uh, then I'm also gonna come in with my feeder and I'm gonna have to strip uh, the end of it as well. I'm gonna take my feeder and I'll wrap it around that bare wire on the bus wire and uh, get a grid solid connection all the way around there. And then I'm going to solder it much as I did up on the, the top of the layout uh, when I was working with the rail. Come in with a little bit of flux and uh, add some liquid flux to do this. Anyway, then we're going to come in with our soldering iron, touch it to that. You see the flux smoke. Just let that get hot for a second. I'm going to add some solder, make sure that it gets through the joint and get off of it and there we have a a, a good soldered connection for a, a feeder wire again just a little bit of electrical tape on those and uh, they are uh, they are ready to go well that's how i install the feeders on my layout and i hope the steps that i've shown you today will be helpful to you as you install track feeders and get the power running to your layout whether you're running direct current or digital command control well, if you enjoyed this video, here's a link to some more great videos about model railroad wiring and electrical. I think you'll enjoy them as well. 
Also, take a moment to look in the description down below where you'll find links to my Amazon page and my Amazon pick of the week, as well as tons of other great links that I know you'll enjoy and benefit from. If you'd like to get more out of Ron's Trains and Things, then consider channel membership, and you can find all the details about that by clicking the Join button down below this video. Well, if you'd like some more Model Railroad content right now, check out the videos linked on your screen. And be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great Model Railroad videos, and I look forward to seeing you then. 10...